as soon as you mention like reincarnation, the first thing you have, right, the first thing you have is people thinking about the false and not the true. You know, when you start to mention things like reincarnation. So it may seem to some that we oppose um, the idea of reincarnation in some of the earlier videos where it said that um, to His Majesty there was the Canada interview and it was said that many Ethiopians and many people believe that you're the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. And then he speaks, he responds to it, and speaks about the Rastafarians and the Rastafari brethren. And he says that he spoke plainly, that he is, he is a man, he is mortal, and he will be replaced by the oncoming generation. And not to make a mistake in pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. Now, even to this day, there's a lot of folks that they'll hear the interview, they'll look at the transcription, and of course they're going to come with their own particular um, conclusions, and, and that is to be expected. If people have free will of thought, they're going to have their own conclusions. Now, in order to address that particular issue and touching on the subject matter of reincarnation, I think it's important to touch on the subject matter of reincarnation again with what we have hopefully learned and getting to the root of the word. Now, what we oppose about reincarnation is not the word reincarnation, but it is a particular school of thought or theology of reincarnation that in ignorance, when someone hears reincarnation, they're going to think about the little fragments that they've heard about or seen in movies or maybe read about concerning, say, say, certain types of Hindu, for example, philosophy or certain types of so-called New Age or medieval or other kind of um, religions or cults or sects or whatever, whatever these things may be called, because they will call themselves, we're not a religion, we're spirituality, we're this, we're that, so forth and so on. But when we're looking at the Bible and we take the word reincarnation, we have to ask a couple of questions. How are we defining the word reincarnation? Are we saying that this one particular person who died and, 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 and gone, say they died and were buried or something like that, right, was um, re their soul was reincarnated in another person? Is that what we are saying, that in terms of reincarnation. Now, if that is what people are saying, this is, this is more tends to the so-called Hindu, or some might even say Buddhist, but some of the, um, the, 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 far, the further Eastern um, philosophies. And we can't say that, that this is true, biblically speaking. Now, the word reincarnate to would be what? Re, re, carnos, carnos, or car, carne means flesh. You know, you, you know, carnage, like we have the word carnage, that means a lot of dead bodies, basically. You know, or flesh body, right? The physical body, in other words. So re means again in the physical body, again in the physical body. So that would be what the word reincarnated will be defined as. That would be the etymological, that would be the true meaning. But then you have the connotative meanings of reincarnated, which are according to certain schools of thought. So what some folks do is they'll take a little dab or smattering of, of Hindu or maybe Buddhist or certain Hindu religions or philosophies because different, you know, Hinduism is a, is, a, is a big tent and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of acts in that, under that tent, you know, like saying Christianity is a lot of sects and denominations that might believe something a little different here or there and that changes, you know, changes what that particular group, how they identify themselves and basically what they, you know, what they believe. Um, but looking at the word reincarnated, you know what I'm saying? We have to look at the word, you know what I'm saying? It's like evolution. It's like just like the word evolution. If we were to talk about evolution, some folks would say, oh, you don't believe in creation. You're like those 
atheists who talk about there's no God, and we're talking about evolving. We're talking about a word. Now, one can evolve physically, truly. We see that from a, a baby growing up, you know. None of us was born big. If we were, we were born in a bad situation. You know what I mean? If we were born big, because that's like to say one is born retarded or, you know, that's the old-fashioned way, born big. So, so we're not born big. We're born as a baby. We go through stages of evolving and growing. Now, are you speaking about Darwinian evolution? You see, and we really have to start to look at these words very, very carefully. I mean, this is like an individual you know, you could say this is like a personal responsibility that we have to take when we eat these ideas, when we consume these ideas, when we take these ideas into mind and we express them as our own idea, we have to first of all find out, is this what I really think? Is this what I, why am I saying this? Because you're giving your life force, you understand, to something by endorsing it, and this also now creates a, a consequence. Christ spoke about consequence in words. He says, let your yea be yea, your nay be nay. I won, I won, I del them, I del them. Because whatever be more than that cometh from the evil one. And we live in a society right now where people very loosely will kind of give a portion or a piece of their heart and soul to ideas that they haven't even thought about what they really mean or they will go along with groups of people out of some modern kind of peer pressure in a sense. You know, people in my church believe this, so I believe it too. Why don't you think about it? You know, those are the beginning levels of, of, of consciousness right there. You know, we sort of think about the words that we even use. You know, so we sort of think about what the word really means, because even the Bible tells you in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. From a Greek understanding, in the beginning was the logos, to imply from the beginning is logic. And that logic must be with God, with the truth or the reality of life. You understand? And thus you will find that reality, that truth or reality of life is God, and there's no longer that wall of separation. And verily death is swallowed up. This whole idea of death is swallowed up in life, and, and, and life you understand? Or the soul is not swallowed up in its ignorance and thus in death. So the word reincarnation, just to kind of express this and to get forward into the reasoning that I and I was just segued for a moment right here, on the word reincarnation and, and touched on the word evolution. You see, because some think of these words, you understand, from an ignorant perspective because they don't even understand, well, what does the word mean? In other words, two things. You know, there's some people who try to beat up on etymology. And, you know, why they don't want you to get into etymology is because once you get into etymology, there's two things about word. There's two things about word, and there's two things about logic. Now, we talked about um, reincarnation, and we explained that re means again, and carnos means again in the flesh. You understand? And we do not say that reincarnation as a principle in other words, in the scientific, the gnosis of life is an impossibility, and it's not what his imperial majesty in the interview spoke against. He said that, make no mistake in pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. So you have to find there the word emanation and then check what, what systems of thought or schools of thinking that suggest in almost explicit language that man is emanated from a deity, like man springs out, in a sense, from a deity. And then you have to recognize that if we're not to make a mistake in pretending or assuming that, then what is the opposite that we should know? If man does not emanate from a deity, is it true? Is it logical that the deity really emanates from man? In other words, you shall, you, you shall know a tree by its fruit. In other words, you can tell one by what they do or by their actions in, 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 that, in that sense. So when we do know the word, you understand the word, right? When we deal with the word, we are dealing with 
the logos, right? And it's interesting because I think we're on a page right here in Cannabis Matrix that we want to that we want to highlight to you right here, and I think this connects with the um, the false prophecy part in the Matrix movie. Um, yeah, right here. It's on page 114 of I and I New Scroll right here, the Cannabis Matrix, right, on page 114. I own this. The composer says, during his travel, speaking about the Matrix movie, it's in the... Um, the section, the matrix allegory, the messianic allegory, excuse me, the messianic allegory behind the matrix trilogy, the messianic allegory. So here on page 114 says, during his travels to figure out what he is supposed to do, in the first matrix sequel, Neo meets the architect, the principal designer the principal designer of the matrix, right? Now, logos, I remember logos means word. That's what you have in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. Now, implied, this refers to logic. This refers to logic. In the beginning was the word. And it says the word was what? With God, right? With God, Scripturally, according to the true theology of the Ethiopian Hebrews and, and the Bible, you understand, God, if you want to define God in the Word, God in the Word is truth, right? Is truth. God in the Word is truth. Spirit and truth. But truth is both spiritually, but it can manifest in a more, um, you know, in a more tangible it's intangible at its core. Remember, everything that we see was created from word. You understand? And everything that we see is also word activated. You know, there's a brother, what Anup, in the vid we just saw, he was showing how, you know, through the word and through the mind, through the spirit of man, man can move things. But society, the programming of this particular Babylonian and Gentile matrix tells you that you can't, you understand, tells you an opposite thing, but the truth tells you something different. So the beginning is the word, logos, the logic, and the word was with God, right, and the word was God. Now, Christ defines God and the true worshipers as worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So in spirit, we're talking about the spiritual, and the spiritual is that which we do not see. It, putting it kind of simple, is that which is the invisible, right? And then when we speak about that which we see, that's what man defines as the truth coming from a material, a material rational sort of mind, what he's able to see. You understand? So he says that if I see it, I can believe in it. Therefore, he misunderstands what the word amen or the true word for belief actually means. You, you know what I mean? Because if one sees something, why do they hope for it? So these words have a inner logic, you know, have, a, have an inner logic to them. So when we're speaking about etymology, right, because some folks don't like y'all learning etymology, because once you learn etymology, it's almost like once you learn the code of the matrix, everything is based on the word. Whether we talk about law, government, you understand, even in, in, in certain communities, they have their slang, you know, they have their way of speaking. It's a way of using logic, word, and expression to communicate so, so much compressed data comes through words, you understand? But there's also the mode and modulation, demodulation. Like if I'm speaking to somebody who is my brother and we have a code or a slang that we speak and I say something in a certain way that the word also means something else, somebody over here who hears me who's not part of that society, they hear something different or they interpret that to be different too. Now, that example right there, is what we're saying about the stars as well. You know what I'm saying? Speaking about the heavenly stars. 
and speaking about the key to really understanding biblical prophecy, not just now in 2012, but especially now, but from now and beyond. Because we need to really focus on, I mean, now, yes, you know what I'm saying? But we need to first get rooted in the past. You see, we need to have a root, and we have to digest, you understand, know the, the wisdom of the past, both to know who we are and know what, you know, know the truth now in order to see, you understand, know the future. Otherwise, we're going to be victims to a very faulty program, you understand, know a rebooting in a sense of the Babylonian matrix, whether this is a time of tribulation, you know, because they already know that their system is out of date. You understand? It's out of time, really, because it's out of sync with divine and with heavenly time, you know? But right here is the part about, okay, etymology, etymology, two parts of this etymology right here and this connotation, right, connotation, because this is still on the point about reincarnation. You understand? And we use a reincarnation as a word. So the word has, has two parts. One is etymology. If you break it down, etymos means, means true, and logos means word. So you see how this even links with what um, uh, John's Gospel 1 and 1 tells you. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So now Gnostically, knowing the truth, knowing the correspondence behind word, you understand? Taking it out of the Gentile Western, getting it to the rational Gentile, you understand, which is the Greek right here. You understand? We now understand this as logic. But now this also, when we now take it to the Hebrew, we're going to another level, you understand, of clarity and interpretation. We actually can then see the thread, like on the computer, when you go to source code, you can then read the thread, you understand, to exactly where it originates and what's the real context. And so you can see what the reality of the time is, but then you'll be amazed to see how so many others don't see it. They, they would, because they're, they're movie, it's like in the Matrix movie, The Lady in Red Scene, and, 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 and uh, Morpheus talking about how the people are so hopelessly, like they will even defend and die for this system. You know what I'm saying? They're not really ready in that sense to be unplugged. So when we're speaking about even the kind of bosom or the cannabis, and some say, some ignorant rosters might say, everybody should just smoke weed and get high and so forth and so on. It's really not for everyone if we call it holy. You know what I'm saying? If we say that it is holy and truly it is, then it's not for everyone. And thus explains the bad tripping, you know, the, the whole bad tripping you know, kind of idea and, and even the gateway, not the gateway to the kingdom. You see, when it's not taken in Christ, when you don't recognize Christos in the cannabis, you, you, you're not, you don't have a gateway to the kingdom, you know what I'm saying, but you have a gateway actually to Sheol and to hell. So it is a gateway, the cannabosum, the cannabis, it is a gateway. And in Christ, we have, it becomes a tree of what? It becomes a tree of life apart from Christ. That's where we now have this so-called, we have the crucifixion ordeal, so to speak, apart from Christ, you understand, on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you understand, on the tree of the knowledge. And that brings as its fruit, you understand, death. That brings as its ultimate fruit or its, its byproduct, death. But now, when, me, when, when, when Neo, Neo is also very interesting because Neo means what? What is Neo? Neo in the Greek, Neo is more Greek. You understand? Neo in the Greek, it means new. So now we have in the Bible the idea, this is where the allegory becomes very interesting, the messianic allegory. In Revelation, we know the, the true Messiah or the black Messiah, the true Messiah for this age or Christ and his kingly character is Kedemawi Haile Selassie, is Rastafari. So now when we understand that and then see the biblical or the scriptural fulfillment of Christ, we can see the reality of the, revel of the revelation of Rastafari and also see how the, the Matrix um, trilogy reflects that. 
and it just makes perfect sense with the mother of the matrix, you know, saying, being one of our sisters. She reminds me of in, 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 in the Egypt, we're in spiritual Egypt now. You remember there was Moses. Remember Moses' sister. You know what I mean? Remember Miriam in that sense. And remember um, um, those Shephira and Pua, you know, saying, who were the midwives. You know, the midwives who Jah made a house for because they refused to kill, you know, saying, the male Hebrew children. They, they refused to kill, in other words, the black male's manhood. They refused to kill that in the river, you know, saying, to the crocodiles, more suit typhonian sort of um, images. But he literally now, when Neo, the new man, Notice Neo is symbolic for the new man when he meets the architect. Now, the Bible also uses the same language. Even Paul speaks of himself as a, as a, 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 a master kind of a, 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 a architect. You know what I'm saying? He speaks in this um, 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 builder. Master builder is how King James translates it. A master builder, you know. Um, so he's the principal designer of the matrix. But then if you look at this character of the architect, now Masonically speaking, Masonically speaking, the grand architect, get this, he sits in the east. Well, if that is so, uh, you know, and, and this is something that goes according to even Masonic law, you know, to the very ancient-y. This is an ancient something. So who would be this ancient one? So wherever this one sits in the east must be in an ancient land too. When we understand now the biblical interpretation, the Targum or the Tergum, as you say, the Tergum, this would be the king of kings, Christ and his kingly character, or as COINTELPRO says, the black messiah. So here the new man, the Neo, right, can we say Rastafari, he literally comes close to the place where the architect sits, the throne of God in heaven, the, the, the writer says right here in parentheses, and receives, the key word is receive, because receive is Kabbalah or Kebele in the Afro-Shemitic root, the Ethiopic root of the Hebrew, Ebele means to receive, and thus we have Kabbalah. So he receives instructions, or Kabbalah, or Ebele instructions on what he must do in order to save Sion, in order to save Zion. In other words, he receives a kingdom from the hand of God. Now this is interesting, because if we look in Revel Revelations, right, Revolutions, Revelations 5, Right, we have the one who sits on the throne, right, who seems to be personifying God who sits on the throne. Then we have the Lamb character, which personifies Christ. Then we have this book, you understand, which personifies the book of the seven seals. It says it in the scripture. And then we have the revelation, right, of Moa and Bethesda in the Negeta Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. So within the Matrix movie, Seeing that its original inspiration, you understand, is one of I and I own, this is another reason why we can decipher these sort of codes and relationships, you understand, within this modern mythology. Now, whatever they intended it, you know, some folks, you know, have their own speculations about, oh, well, because they, they're in a state of doubt, they're in a state of justifying untruth. So, they cannot look at that and see that there is a uptake from it. They can only see, well, that's a part of this, this, the, these evildoers who got everything all sealed. It's like they worship the evildoers instead of looking for the truth. So they're always seeking to dismiss the truth in order, in, instead of receiving it. You know what I'm Instead of receiving it. So now, what's, what's interesting right here is that there's a connection with John 6. Six and 46, which says, No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Then he explains to Morpheus, right, and Trinity that the prophecy is false. So there's that scene in the sequel movie where um, Neo, you understand, or biblically, New Testament sense speaking, the new man, 
you know what I'm saying, the new man, right? The new man now explains to Morpheus, you know what I'm saying, who is like his, his, his elder, his teacher in that sense, you know, was, and Trinity, which is almost symbolic of the church on a certain level, that the prophecy is false. Now, this is very, very significant. The prophecy is false. Now, the author here says brings it to the saints on earth, and proceeds with his messianic plan trying to figure out how to stop the war and salvage, you understand, know and, and salvage the sheep of Zion. Now, Neil travels to the surface of the earth, an inherently dangerous place like hell. Now, if you look at the movie, right, again, the sequel, when he travels to the surface, right, of earth, you understand, know it was... And a, a dangerous place inherently, and it was like hell. Now, the Bible says in one of the Psalms of uh, Tehuti, Psalm of Dawit, of David, it says that, um, that all nations that forget Jah would be turned into the word that's used active is uh, Sheol or Seol. Sheol. Now, it's interesting because many will say Sheol is is hell. And this is where the Gentiles, um, the Eurocentric or the whitewashed Christians, a lot of confusion around the word. And, and, and part of it is, is in the translations and not enough diligence is done to well, get to the Greek word behind the New Testament word and then get to the Hebrew word and provide the links between these words and what ideas in the time these words stood for. Because if we look at it from our modern um, translation and mistranslation, th this is one of the problems is that people think it means hell in the sense of the, the place of fire on that level. No, it's not talking about the place of fire. It is speaking about the place of the dead or from an ancient um, Egyptian um, mysteries that Moses was learned in. That would be the amenta. But now overstanding where would the meant to be in its material world, so-called reality, that would be the West, because a mentor was the West. And then if we continue to study that word, we can find the Ethiopic and the Amharic of a mentor is a place of doubting, is a place of duality and doubting, almost like um, we should say mixed up moods and attitudes. It's a, it's a place of doubting. You understand? Almost like lack of faith, lack of confidence, lack of trust, you know, was the amenta. But then, according to the theology of Egypt, the amenta was like the underworld. Now, many might have thought this was the place after death. You understand? Although some say there's a place that's like that, but now in the in, in God's son, speaking of Israel, who came out of Egypt, and who is the true son of the father, it says that they would go to a land, and this land would be a return to this former place that was known as that underworld, you understand, or that place of, for lack of a better word, hell and torment, or the Sheol, the Tuat, or the Duat, the Duat. Now, Kabbalistically, on the Kabbalah tree, if you study the Kabbalistic tree of life, you'll see there's a, there's a hidden um, sifarot. You know what I'm saying? There's a hidden chakra or sifra, bamarinically, um, um, or according to the Amharic, Amharic um, sifra means a space, a measured space. And then we have sifarot and chakra, which is also, some say, a form of the word. But now, he used a spaceship. Did you get this in the movie? He used a spaceship that was named Logos, which is equals the word. And this is a name that's reserved for Jesus or Joshua in the Greek Koina version. See John 1 and 1. You understand? For example, and by meditating, you understand, by mediating rather, he mediated with the machine God. Now, there was a machine god or the, the Dios ex um, Machina, Machina, um, Dios ex the god out of a machine, Machina. Um, and it's interesting because 
Bamarinya in the Amharic, the word Makina, which is a loan word, it also means a car. You understand? So we have the word Machina, which according to proper Latin would be Makina. You understand? Makina. You understand? Um, later Latin time, maybe Machina, but Makina. Dios ex Machina. In Matrix Revolution, he strikes a deal with it to neutralize Agent Smith whose power has grown beyond the machine's ability to contain the devil in exchange for peace. Now, here's what's really kind of very, very interesting and um, might um, blow some people's mind, but hopefully not I and I, you understand, is that these things are happening right now in the world global political system. In a sense, Obama would be this type, and this would be the deal, in a sense, that either has been made or might be made because he would be the symbol for the lost sheep. You understand? Some might say even a, a kind of bordering on a golden calf um, adoration, but some of that has come down a little bit since the economics, so forth and so on. But he would be that representative man for the consciousness of this lost sheep right now. You understand? As we had Martin Luther King before, as we had maybe Malcolm X, so forth and so on, for the, for the vast majority. So in the end, after his sacrifice succeeds, his body ascends to heaven in what appears to the inner initiates who can see, using their inner vision, as a blazing display of light. That's analogous to what Joshua or Yeshua, what Jesus did. This is, when we see that part of the movie, it's, it's, it's an analogy, it's a kind of a, mythol a modern mythology based on this Christ type, right? Um, Jesus supposedly neutralized the devil, right? He supposedly neutralized the devil in exchange for peace, shalom, or salam, for or in the hearts, the consciousness of men, of humanity, who are in spiritual Zion, spiritual Zion. And, and this is for those who, in other words, who are the followers of Joshua, or those who, according to him, keep his word. See, that's the qualification that Yeshua gives. Not what your church is passing and preaching may tell you a little bit here, a little bit there, but Christ speaks about that qualification by keeping that word. There's something important about that word that even leads to eternal life. That's the key in the overcoming of death, the swallowing up of death by that life of Yeshua HaMoshiach and not being swallowed up, you understand, by the apep or by the dragon or, or hell or death or any of those, those types right there. And then ascended to heaven to sit at the right side of God the Father. Now, after the deal between Neo and Dios ex machina, or ex machina, succeeds, and Smith is neutralized, notice, the machine God, the machine God in the Matrix movie says, it is done. Now, some might say, oh, that's, that's a mockery in a sense. But it's not really a mockery unless you want to defend untruth and doubt, but if you want to now overstand truth and recognize there's a God in this world or of this world that the Bible says is not the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we've been touching on that, you know, and so that some of the people don't get the gospel, don't get this Wengel, don't get the revelation of Rastafari, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, because the God of this world, or we can say Deus, Ex Machina, you understand, or Ex Machina, the God out of, God, Deus, Ex, out of, Machina, Machina, out of Machine, the Machine God says, it is done, Tefet Amen, it is done or it is complete, which is the same thing that Yeshua said just before he died or, or gave his, 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 his soul, it, into the Father's hands, in other words, his soul into the Father's hands. You see the link? So 
So that, that's, that's part of the mystery right there that's fulfilling. And to those who can receive, those who can hear what the Spirit say, hear and heed. So anyway, brothers and sisters, we're going to continue with the, the next part of this. Stay tuned. More to come. Yah willing. Shalom Rastafari. <laughs>